Yo, it's your boy Logos, and throughout many of my videos on this channel, I talk about the woke agenda and political ideologies being pushed into movies and cinema, I'm not a fan of it. But honestly, it's pretty surprising that I haven't really talked about video games, because the same thing is occurring. And if I'm being honest, I play video games and been playing video games much more than I watch movies or watch TV shows. To be honest with you, I've been playing video games since I was a kid. Whether it's Nintendo 64 and Mario, whether it's the original Xbox, and Counter-Strike, Halo, and many other games I was a fan of growing up, and even still now to this day. Stuff like World of Warcraft, play Rome well Total War, and all the Total Wars, and have thousands of hours on them because of my love for history. And funny enough, I just haven't gotten around to it. I try to make things focus on particular topics, and every now and then I could pull something in that I don't know, I like or I watch my free time. I haven't done that with video games. But now I have the perfect opportunity because for the past week or so, maybe even a few weeks, there's been this thing called, I don't know, Gamergate 2.0 or something similar to the original occurrence, which my understanding, which may be wrong, might be, I think it involved women in the game industry and the stuff that they go through and stuff like that. If I'm wrong about that, please let me know. It's been like a few years, I think, three or four years since the original game of game has gone on. But this new thing is because of wokeism, political ideologies, and forcing of DII within video games. And if you ask me, it's not necessary. The same way it's not within movies or TV shows. Growing up, I remember diversity, full black, Hispanic, other minority characters within TV shows, movies, and video games. And it was no big deal. I think part of the reason why people are so anti against this stuff is not because they're racist or sexist or phobic this or phobic that. It's because they're sick of the heavy handedness. Nothing subtle. It is not about putting a black character into a video game or a show. It's more about putting them into the game or show and then having that person be a vector or a, I don't know, a mouthpiece for whatever ideology. That studio, that writer, or that, I don't know, back end investor want them to say. And oftentimes, I don't know, of late, it seems to be a DII stuff, the diversity, equity, and inclusion stuff. If you ask me, similar to the Bud Light situation, you're here to make video games, you're here to make movies, you shouldn't worry about the, all this, you shouldn't worry about all this other stuff. And antagonizing your base whether it's your customers or the people making these products, it's very, very stupid. And especially about the antagonizing the people that make these products, because that's very relevant to what made me want to record this in the first place. This is still ongoing. And to be honest with you, I'm not the most, I don't know, knowledgeable person on the topic, but I know a lot about video games, playing them for a while. And I don't know, maybe me as a black man, at least say what I got to say without the word about being called racist or anything else like that. If you ask me, people don't really have a problem with, you know, black characters in video games or any character of any race within video games. It's just when it's not about actual character or story, it's about politics. Politics that pull you out of the game. If you ask me, you don't really need to pull all that stuff in there. That's not what I pay for. Even me as a black man, I don't care to have Miles Morales and this story talk about the police and BLM and all this other stuff. I don't need it. I don't need a black character to talk about plight and racism and every damn piece of media he's in or she's in. Why, why is it so hard to just make a character the same way you would make a white character, but he's just black and he has a black family? He could still have the same goals, ambitions. You still have the same issues, problems, obstacles, because those are human. Those are universal. Many problems are not just obligated to your race. I know in this day and age, everything got to be related to race, but many problems that human beings face are universal. If you ask me, we have more stuff in common than we don't. All this other bullshit with, you know, fighting each other. It, it, it's just a distraction from real issues and real people that really hate us or don't care about us. If you ask me whether you're black, white, Spanish, Asian, whatever, average everyday person have more in common with themselves 
then all these other people that try to talk down to us and say how we should think or talk. I understand this is a long ass intro, but this video is pretty short. But this stuff really needs to be said. Because these people think they can talk to us and say what we want as consumers and how we should think as consumers. Because these people, this, I guess they're a, consult a consulting firm for video games called Sweet Baby Inc. And I guess they talk to video game companies to try to make their products or video games or DLCs, whatever it may be, the characters or stories more diverse. Not naturally, not organically, but through some type of, I don't know, monetary risk or monetary gain. It really makes no sense, if you ask me. That's my opinion. But let's get into the video. Well, actually, let me read through the caption first because. I really want to make sure I get all the contents I can because after this one, I'm going to react to a guy that I've never seen before. But he's going to go more into this stuff. And it's probably more updates since the video he made. But if there are, and you want me to, I'll react to that too. But it says the co founder of Sweet Baby Inc., Kim Belair, proudly explains the method she uses to force bosses at game studios to censor, alter, and diversify game projects she feels are problematic terrify them <laughs> aka threaten them with the anger of the cancel culture mob here's another thing too it's like the flip side of the anger of the cancel culture mob these people that are so angry they're not going to buy your products and if they do they're not going to buy them to the point where it's going to overshadow or overpower the amount of people that don't be a part of this cancel culture mob do you get what i'm saying because most of the time, these people that get up so ups that get so upset about stuff like, um, like Harry Potter, that game that came out, those people really not gonna buy the game no matter what. Same thing with Disney and their movies. They trying to cater to a certain crowd, but the people that get so focused on race and all this other bullshit, they're not really gonna go and see your movies. If they are, it's not gonna make a dent in the three hundred, four hundred, five hundred million dollars that you spend on it. And that goes for the same for video games. These big AAA studios, they're already putting out bullshit with multiple updates, maintenance, gotchas, um, subscriptions that make no sense, all this other stuff, DLC that's overpriced. All these things that they're doing is already making the game worse. Then you're going to come in and try to add all this other stuff onto it. If you ask me, there's a deeper issue within video games and it's not diversity. It goes back to how much it costs to make them, and it goes back to their philosophy. Also goes back to the fact that it's not really people that care about video games making a good story and control anymore. Games cost so much to make, at least with AAA studios, they cost so much to make, and they're made by such billion dollar industries where people that don't care about video games, they care about money and investments, come in and just screw stuff up. They don't focus on making the consumer happy the gamer happy. They care more about their investment, their return, and how much of a bonus they can get. For example, I'm a World of Warcraft fan. I've been playing that since middle school. I still play it. Well, no, nah, I, I play it often. It's been a, a good while since I played it, but I still enjoy it. I still follow the lore when there's new updates about news expansions. I still, you know, check in. I still follow on with live streams for like BlizzCon because I care about the universe. Even if it's been through some BS over the past decade, I still love World of Warcraft. It's a great story. It's a great characters. Two of my favorite characters from video games, Illidan and Arthas. It's from World of Warcraft. But even still, when Bobby Kotick, if you, if you only know who he is, if you're like a really like true gamer, in my opinion, maybe not, but he's like a investor, uh, I don't know the exact, like the type of Wall Street type of guy that's just really good with money and focusing on how to make companies make more money through their products. And he came over to Blizzard, I think, through Activision. And since then, they really just monetized their game to hell to the point that it's really not that enjoyable no more. World of Warcraft used to have millions and millions and millions of followers or subscribers. It's not the same as it used to be. Of course, that happens over time with any product for the most part, but it got worse because of their need for money. 
So throwing all that stuff I said on top of the DLCs and and maintenance and greed and CEOs like Bobby Kotick messing up these companies, you really can't afford to have I don't know worries about the cancel culture mob. They're not buying your video games. But I want to just react to the short clip because I know shit has been like ten minutes. I still haven't gotten to it. But either way, this whole thing gonna get expanded on later on. But I just want to see what she says, just in case. Maybe this caption is taking enough context. I don't think so, but let's just get to it. Um, if you're a creative working in AAA, which I did for many, many years, um, put this stuff up to your higher ups. And if they don't see the value in what you're asking, um, if you're a creative working in AAA, which I did for many, many years, um, put this stuff up to your higher ups. And if they don't see the value in what you're asking for when you ask for consultants, when you ask for research, Go have a coffee with your marketing team and just terrify them with the possibility of what's going to happen if they don't give you what you want. Um, if you're a creative working in AAA, which I did for many, many years, um, put this stuff up to your higher ups. And if they don't see the value in what you're asking for when you ask for consultants, when you ask for research, go have a coffee with your marketing team. And Well, okay. So it's basically just reinforcing what it said in the caption. So yeah, they didn't take a lot of context. And she's encouraging other people to do the same. I saw Asmin go say, and I agree with him, that this is a deeper rooted issue than Sweet Baby Inc., the consulting firm that's really getting the heat of this whole issue right now with Gamergate 2.0 and the DEI, diversity, equity, inclusion stuff, and pushing in games and stuff like that. He said this is just a, you know, just a face or a scapegoat of the overall issue it is more deeply rooted and i agree with that because it's a whole philosophy that's going on in media as a whole tvs movies video games a whole bunch of other stuff where people of a such a small minority can scream and cry and bitch and moan over really nothing of substance but still these companies want to listen to them anyway to the detriment of their properties to the detriment of their consumers because <laughs> And of course, wait, right. so this is like, a, I see, I just now seeing the date. So this is a few years old, but it, this whole thing is still relevant because this sweet baby ink thing and this ongoing controversy is, you know, just now happening. So even though this date says from 2019 and we know almost five, you know, almost like exactly five years ahead of this, we're seeing that they're having a, I don't know, effect, because if you go on the website, you can see a list of games that they have worked on and a few, I think for spoken, I think that was on there, but I think a few more, they had more of this D D E I stuff and it wasn't natural. It wasn't organic. It was shoehorned in and that's the issue. I mean, you can't just focus on telling a good story it messes up the whole product. And that's what I'm going for. I was going to do a video about Ingrid Boda from God of War Ragnarok being in the game she's like a young like 13 14 year old black girl that's in the game and me as a black man personally it threw me the hell off because how did she get there this is a norse mythology viking game how, what black people was there how is she a giant it, it just didn't make any sense there was another black guy in the game too, and that threw me off too because once again, for the exact same reasons, it just made no sense. If you want to have black characters within your video game, color with it to have a game within the right context, telling the proper story, or age, time period, whatever, where it makes sense. Not because you need to fill a quota. I think actually I'm glad I brought that up. I think Sweet Baby Inc. Oh I remember, I could be wrong on this. I think they actually did like consult with um uh, how am I forgetting them? Santa, Santa, Mon Santa Monica Studios. The people that make God of War and God of War Ragnarok. So, unless I'm wrong on that, damn, it made sense why now why she's in the game and the other black guys in the game. It, it just really stuck out to me like a sore thumb. And that's not a bad thing to think. That's not a racist thing to think. It doesn't make sense within the story and the context and the setting. Come on, like, if we had a Nubian God of War game and just had a random white guy there and it wasn't like during the time of the Romans when um, Augustus Caesar 
and after the death of Julius Caesar was like happening. And, and it made sense historically too, because Nubia, unless I'm getting confused with Ethiopia, but I'm pretty sure Nubia, Nubia and Rome had like a conflict for a little bit. And of course they eventually got crushed by Rome because Rome was so huge, so powerful, the legions, the generals, but having that type of interaction, a white guy in a Nubian game, it made sense if that's the setting that you're having. That's all I'm trying to say. And I think that's how most people feel. There's nothing wrong with having black characters in video games or any type of media. It's the way that it's happening where you just have it where it makes no sense. Come on, a black Viking, a black Norse character, a black, a black teenage girl in Scandinavia. Come on, make it make sense. It doesn't make any sense. And that's the issue. And we had black characters, black video game characters like Sergeant Johnson, like Coltrane from Gears of War. Man, like this is not a racist type of thing. It's just unnecessary, shoehorned, forced. And people are sick of it. They truly are sick of it. And these companies are so stupid that they can't realize listening to these people worried about a small percentage of people is somehow more important than, you know, your legions or hundreds, millions of fans that you really do need to make more video games and to sustain your careers. I don't get it. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. I know this was like just mostly me ranting, but it is what it is. I really don't talk about video games much, but I have a lot to say when it comes to this stuff because it's relevant. And still, I can make it within the context of the overall channel and the overall no purpose of it. From my politics, societal stuff, knowledge, such and so forth. Who knows where it's going to go from here, but I'm probably going to do a couple more videos on it. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Like, share, and subscribe. It's your boy Logos, and I'll see you next time. Peace.